In this video, we're going to cover how you are assessed for the specialist pathway, specifically how the college assesses your application, with a particular emphasis on the interview. Hi there, I'm Dr. Anthony Llewellyn. I'm the career doctor. I'm a real doctor in Australia down under who has considerable knowledge and expertise about the medical career pathways here in Australia. Welcome to this video in the series on the specialist pathway. In this video, we're going to focus on the college assessment process. I'll be touching a little bit on the paper application, but because we've featured this in previous videos, I'll mainly be talking about the interview process, which I'm sure is something that if you've watched this far into the video series, you're particularly keen to hear about. Before we jump in, though, I did want to point out that I do have a course on the Specialist Pathway, which you can enroll in for free, which contains even more information that is covered in this video series. There's a link here or here and in the description below for you. So the general process. So as we've highlighted in previous videos, if you are a specialist international medical graduate and you want to be assessed for the specialist pathway, you first need to do a couple of steps to verify your degrees with the Australian Medical Council. And you may also need to sit an English language test. After this, you are then dealing directly with the relevant college. And this generally takes the form of firstly, an initial paper-based application where you supply a great deal of detail about your background, training, experiences, qualifications, and other stuff. And that usually takes a bit of time to put together properly. This application is then reviewed by the college. Now, normally it is reviewed for completeness first by someone like in an administration role, after which usually a fellow of the college will review it for an initial assessment of your comparability. After all this has occurred, you will then normally be invited for an interview. Now, there are a few notable exceptions to that above process, three that I want to highlight in particular. Firstly, it is possible for the college to conclude after the paper-based review of your application that you are not comparable. They will generally only do this if your application is clearly not comparable, but this does happen. If this does happen to you, you will normally be given some correspondence from the college with the reasoning outlined and invited to respond. So you do have some avenues of appeal. So it may be that you have not supplied enough information in your initial application and you may be able to correct this and therefore still gain an interview. Otherwise, you will need to accept the decision and think about alternative routes. By the way, this is one of the reasons why I always emphasize that it's particularly important to spend time on your application to ensure that you have outlined enough detail why it is that you are comparable. And it's why a lot of clients use me as part of this process. The second departure from the process of AMC application, paper-based review and interview is the Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Psychiatrists, who uniquely amongst the colleges requires that you obtain a position first prior to applying for specialist assessment. I won't go into the reasons for this situation too much in this video, but it actually makes good sense for the psychiatrist to do it this way, as there are generally a lot of vacancies for psychiatry positions at any one point in time in Australia. The third notable departure from the process of AMC application, paper-based review and interview is the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners, who do not interview candidates, but only perform a paper-based assessment of your application. And I do have a specific video on the specialist pathway for general practice that's in this series for you. So you might want to check that if, out if you are a qualified GP from another country. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail as to the reasons for this college departing from the normal process. And there are actually more than a few ways for IMG doctors to be assessed for general practice and pathways to be assessed or trained in general practice in Australia. But for the purposes of specialist assessment, the RACGP unsurprisingly receives a large number of applications every year and has chosen to look at the comparability of general practice programs in other countries. So it generally makes its assessments based on what overseas qualification you possess. In terms of the paper-based review of your application, as I say, it is important to get it right in the first place, as this will likely reduce the number of questions that the college panel has for you at the interview. For this reason, you should consider getting your application reviewed by an expert. And you should also ensure that you have compared it against the relevant college documents, which are generally the curriculum for the local equivalent training program, which outlines what local trainees are expected to learn and demonstrate in order to become college fellows, and the college's professional qualities framework, which outlines how the college generally expects a locally trained specialist to behave in relation to the types of roles they take on and the sorts of capabilities that they possess. 
It's your job in both the application and the interview to convince the college panel that your training and experience align as closely as possible with the college curriculum and their professional framework. Now let's head into the formal college interview process. That's what you're watching the video for. First of all, when should you expect to be interviewed? Well, the answer to this question does vary a bit. The medical board sets a benchmark for colleges to offer an interview within three months of you submitting an application. But the amount of time it takes to be given an interview does, as I say, vary a little bit. With some colleges offering an interview within a month, others may take more than three months at times. Second of all, who will be interviewing you? Generally, you can be expected to be interviewed by a small panel of college fellows. These are members of the college who are established specialists who have experience in reviewing applications from overseas trained specialists. So they will be specialists in your field. And if you're applying for a subspecialty such as orthopedics or cardiology, for example, then they will be from that subspecialty. Normally, there are two to three people on the panel. It depends from college to college, but usually two or three. And there is generally at least one female and male member of the panel. How <laughs> generally be offered the opportunity to interview via video conference. Pre-COVID, it was considered a good idea to try to attend in person if you could. However, that's not really the case anymore. And even before COVID, you might have turned up to the interview at the college headquarters, say in Melbourne, to find that the panel members were zooming in from Perth, Newcastle and Brisbane. So basically, it's all done via video conference these days. A support person from the college will normally contact you a day or so ahead of time to do a test of the technology and make sure you've got the applications installed, etc., that you need to conduct the interview. You will have to use the video conference platform that the college prefers. This is usually something like Zoom or GoToWebinar or Microsoft Teams or GoToMeeting, something that you'll probably be familiar with already. How long? Just uniformly, and I really have not heard of any exception to this rule, you'll be allotted one hour for your interview. This is intentionally scheduled to allow for plenty of time for the interview to be held. In many circumstances, the interview does not last as long as an hour. So the hour is basically there to ensure that enough time is allowed for you. If your interview finishes up quickly and you have done a good job with your written application, then this is generally, although not always, a good sign for you. But don't be too worried if it takes a little bit longer than that. When I'm talking to my clients about the college interview, I like to explain it this way. The college interview is meant to take on a form of discussion it is meant to feel like it's a chat between colleagues and not really feel like a traditional panel interview that might occur for say when you are applying for a job let's say again according to the clients i've worked with they do report that the interview feels more like a conversation than an interrogation i also like to emphasize with my clients that you are not competing for a job here you're really only competing against yourself uh, you're not competing against other people Maybe you're competing against the college curriculum and the process, but that's it. There are often no set questions. Different specialists report getting different types of questions from their panel. And the nature of questioning will also vary from college to college. Some college panels may just stick to questions that explore and clarify your application. That is, after all, the purpose of the interview. And in general, the first lot of questions you will have will be questions that are specific to your application. And they will start off with questions around your training. The panel will have had a chance to go through your application beforehand, and they will have identified things that they want to talk to you about, things that aren't clear to them or things that they see as a discrepancy between your career profile and what they're expecting a locally trained specialist to do here. So it's a good idea for you to also have a think about areas of your application that might be a bit weak or unclear. For example, do you lack experience in a certain area that local trainees are required to gain experience in? Or have you not been trained in certain procedures that local specialists are expected to be familiar with? Is the way that your program was structured or assessed a little bit confusing? This is the time to be super critical of yourself and your career. Does your training and experience truly compare? Or are there some obvious weaknesses? Think about how you might explain and deal with them in the interview. It's okay to have some discrepancies, but you want to try and minimize them where possible. The panel will normally start with questions related to your training and experience. And once they're happy with this area, move on to questions about your consultant experience. It's for this reason I emphasize to my doctor clients that I work with that the emphasis tends to be on training first and consultant experience second. 
And we can see what I mean here in this document from the Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Radiologists, which shows the order in which your application is considered. After the panel has finished asking questions that clarify your training and consultant experience, they may choose to ask some additional questions related to your current work. They often like to get a feel for what level you're working at. So colleges may ask questions about your current role as a specialist or consultant in order to get a better feel for your level of performance. They're wanting to know that you're working at a truly consultant level. So this may take the form of questions asking for you to give, say, specific examples. The College of Physicians traditionally does this a fair bit. So they may ask you for an example of a recent patient you have been involved with, or an example of a typical work week. They may ask for an example of dealing with conflict at work. That's quite common. Other colleges may have some case scenarios that they want you to discuss. Typically, these are scenarios that have both clinical aspects as well as other aspects, such as professional or ethical or management challenges. The College of Surgeons panels typically gives candidates some case scenarios to discuss. I'm often asked whether you might be given things like reports or patient files or images to look at and to give your opinion on. And whilst this might seem obvious, say, for radiology or dermatology to do, in my experience, it's not common even for those obvious colleges such as radiology or dermatology. The end Once the panel feels that they've asked enough questions, they will wrap up the interview. There is usually a time at the end of the hour for you to ask questions or clarify anything that you've said. If you feel you are unclear about something you said during the interview, it's a good idea to say so at this stage. And if you feel there was something important to talk about that was not mentioned, you can also do this at this stage as well. The panel will then thank you for your time. They may give you some feedback at this stage, but it will not be the final feedback. Doctors often ask me how they can best prepare for the interview. You can best prepare for the interview by adhering to some of the tips that I have already gone through. Make sure your application is as clear as possible and explicit as possible. More detail is generally familiarize yourself with the college curricula and their professional frameworks. Make sure you can explain how your training and experience align with what they are expecting. Spend some time practicing some of the questions that you think you'll be asked about in the interview, particularly gaps or discrepancies. It's a good idea to practice summarizing your training experience in two or three minutes, as you'll often be asked to do this. It's also a good idea to think of examples in your consultant practice of some of the capabilities that the college expects of consultants. For example, dealing with complex patients, providing effective communication, working with patients from different backgrounds, performing management tasks, and supporting junior colleagues. I generally find two or three sessions of coaching helps doctor clients to feel better prepared for this interview. Where can I find questions to practice for the interview? I'm often asked, where can I find questions to practice for the interview? In terms of identifying questions to practice for, because the interviews are so infrequent and vary from applicant to applicant, and there is no bank of questions readily available because there's not generally any set questions. The first step then is to think about the process and you'll be able to generate a number of questions that you think might come up from doing this. If you're looking for case scenarios to practice on, then practicing on some of the questions that are asked by the College of Trainees who are applying for entry into training can be useful as these are of a similar standard. One final point I would make about the interview is that because it will be conducted via video, it is worth spending some time perfecting your video conference setup and presence. Make sure it is optimized and that your audio in particular is clear. If you're not a native English speaker and feel that your accent or pronunciation may be a barrier, it's also worth investing some time with a speech coach or speech therapist to improve on this aspect of your performance. What sort of decision should I expect? So clients ask me, what, how will the decision be made? The panel will normally make a determination after the interview, and you will generally hear back from the college fairly speedily, as the benchmark is 14 days. You'll be notified of whether you've been granted no comparability, partial comparability, or substantial comparability. You'll also be notified of some of the reasons for the decision and evidence that's been taken into account. If you're granted partial or substantial comparability, there may be some conditions and requirements attached to that, such as supervision requirements or a requirement to sit some exams or do certain courses or obtain experiences in the areas that the panel consider to be lacking for you. These requirements may affect your prospects for employment. The more conditions, generally the harder it may be for certain employers to employ you. 
So a question that comes up is, can I request consideration of the outcome? Yes, if you disagree with the panel's decision, you will have a short period of time where you can submit a further letter and evidence outlining why you disagree. It's not uncommon in my experience for panels to ignore or misinterpret certain information. So if you do feel that there is a glaring discrepancy, it's worth requesting consideration. So clients are interested in knowing whether they can appeal the decision. Once you have either responded to the initial findings or accepted them, the decision is then finalized. At this stage, you generally do still have an option for an appeal if you still disagree with the final findings. Your chances at this stage of overturning the decision, however, are much less than when requesting reconsideration. So there you go. That's the college assessment process with a focus on the interview for the specialist pathway. Remember, I do have a free course on the specialist pathway that you can join. The link is in the description below. In the final video, we'll be talking about the last steps in the process, which are obtaining a job position and completing your pathway requirements. And I look forward to joining you in the final video.